Testing, testing. One of my teachers and mentors in college, uh, and I have a useless theater arts degree, um, he used to say, don't explain your work. Like, your work should be self-explanatory. If you have to explain your work, there's not enough in the work, uh, right? You should go back and, and do something about it. And then there was the other factor that you don't, as an artist, necessarily want to limit your audience's interpretation or the way that they see your art, which may be very different than what you intended, and that's part of the magic and the fun of artistic expression. So don't explain your work. So uh, I'm coming on to break that rule and explain what I'm about to share with you. It's not that I want to impose an interpretation, just give you some context. And it's not that having the context is always necessary. I love the experience of just going into a piece of art, either, you know, a museum show or a film or a play, anything. Going in completely sight unseen is sometimes very exciting when you have no context. I, <laughs> this is a random example. But I actually saw, that's how I saw Indiana Jones, the very first Indiana Jones movie when it came out. I had no idea what I was about to see. I literally, I got invited by some friends to say, hey, we got tickets to a sneak preview. Do you want to go see it? I'm like, okay, fine. I like, I it just knew it was my friends were interested in it. I had no idea what was about to happen. And then, of course, it was Indiana Jones. And I was like, what, 14 or whatever. I haven't done the math. But yeah, it was the perfect time in my life to just get thrown into something context unseen. Maybe that's why I like it. Anyway, random digression. Um. On the podcast, I have been talking about um, my son, Aryan, and uh, I've already told the story of his birth and how he um, contracted spinal meningitis when he was an infant and was disabled for his life. Another one of my teachers, Tad Danieleski, that I'll be talking about much more in other videos, Tad Danieleski was a survivor of the Dachau concentration camp in World War II. And one of his motifs that I've kind of taken up in life is that pain in life is inevitable and you're going to feel these feelings and have these experiences. So if you are an artist already, you might as well use those life experiences, integrate them into your art, use them as a launching pad or inspiration. And not everyone agrees with that, but I have found it very cathartic. So what I am about to present to you is sort of supplemental material to my ongoing story over in the uh, podcast. That's why I've called this maybe an extra episode or a special episode. Um, this is a performance art piece. Now, uh, both of my daughters are actors, dancers, artists, um, and, uh, and in their own ways, somewhat neurodivergent, right? Each one, uh, like me. Uh, Taja, my second daughter, uh, went to University of Santa Barbara, and as part of her senior project, she was asked to do a movement piece. It was a performance art piece that she needed to write herself that also that had to, it had to emphasize movement uh, and basically body art as an incorporated part of this piece. That was, that was the assignment for school. And so she wrote a piece called Lost Boy, about her brother, her emotional experience around growing up with a disabled younger brother and having that as a part of her life. And then also, you know, dealing with parents who were dealing with their own emotional guilt and pain and confusion about this as well. And so she incorporates all of that into a brief seven, eight minute spoken word and body movement performance art piece celebrating her brother and it's quite beautiful and I'd like to share that with you. <coughs> One last little background story for context. When the kids were little I used to make up bedtime stories for them and it started out with just Sanyu, my, our first, and uh, she was Space Sanyu and she had these space adventures as part of her bedtime story and then her sister came along and she was Technician Taja and the two of them were having these space adventures. Well, when their brother Aryan came along, he was astronaut Aryan. And his job was to always be outside the space capsule doing the spacewalks. 
in part of the story. And this archetype of the astronaut, just from that little childhood thing of a few bedtime stories, just became locked into his identity. And Aryan in a spacesuit, Aryan in a spacecraft, just became this iconic imagery that we associated with him. So that comes up um, in Taj's piece. And it has come up quietly in some of the own videos that I have posted, the astronaut as a symbol for Aryan. Anyway, uh, I will let this piece <laughs> now stand on its own with no further ado. I hope you enjoy Taji Enos's performance of Lost Boy. unsuspecting plates. We left tables and chairs alone and took to the floor, pressed our cheeks against the grain and tried to listen for you, for anything. If only I could let my body turn to sand, slide my grainy fingers through the little cracks to visit you, to whisper, to hear you whisper back. Is not made of sand. Sorry. I feel like you're there and you're not. 
a surfer. Huh. Maybe in a way, I kind of am. little brother 